All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining. And it's so wonderful to see so many of our ambassadors on the call. Thank you for posting a greeting in the chat and letting us know where you're joining from. Uh, just a few notes for housekeeping. Uh, everyone has been muted upon entry. This is to help us control our background noise, but we would love for you to put comments and chats as we move along um, in the chat, uh, sorry, comments and questions in the chat as we move along, and we're gonna be monitoring that. And just to let you know, if I didn't just say that, the meeting is being recorded. Um, and if you would like to have closed captions, um, you can enable that on your screen. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get started right now. So welcome. Um, I'd like to just uh, introduce myself. Uh, for those of you who are new to Artifact, I'm Tony Guglielmo, Director of Artifact with the Low Milken Center for Unsung Heroes. And uh, delighted to welcome you to this program, the 2024 Info Session Competition Webinar. Uh, we're gonna spend the next hour learning about the program um, and the competition and sharing uh, some tips and hearing from other teachers. So I'm joined on the call by uh, some colleagues on my team that I would like to quickly introduce. Uh, first is Michael Kay, Digital Media Editor with Lowell Milk and Family Foundation. And Michael, I'd love uh, if you could uh, say hello to the group. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael. I've seen so many of you before, um, but I'm excited to see all the new names and faces here. Great. And also joining us is Katie Ward, Program Assistant. Hi, everyone. I'm really thrilled to meet all of you in this space and excited to see what artworks come out of it. Great, thank you. And we also have Peter Allison, who's joining us uh, behind the scenes and helping us with tech today. So um, as we get started, I know that I'm seeing so many familiar faces and names um, and some new uh, guests. And I'd like us to take a quick poll just so that we have um, a sense of who's on the call tonight with us. So if you wouldn't mind, there's three quick questions um, about your role about whether you're new to Arf Artifact or returning, and uh, about your um, vision for the 2024 competition, whether you plan to participate. So let's just take a few minutes and answer those questions. You should see the poll on your screen. All right, I think we can end the poll, Peter. And if you wouldn't mind sharing the results. All right, so let's see. We have the majority of us at 64% educators. We do have some students here on the call tonight that have been invited to share about their experience. It's wonderful. Um, and some other newcomers. We have, um, wow, almost half are new and half of us are returning. So that's interesting. And then uh, wonderful to see that we have the majority are uh, ready to participate in the Artifact 2024 competition. Great. Thank you. If you would uh, close the poll, Peter. All right. Well, I just want to welcome again all of our newcomers. Um, and also make a shout out to our Artifact Ambassadors that are on the call. Katie is posting a link to the Artifact Ambassadors profiles. Um, and this is our inaugural cohort of fellows this year that are participating online from Nationwide in Canada and working with the Artifact curriculum um, in uh, their classrooms and communities. So welcome to all of our ambassadors. Um, on the next slide is a quick agenda of what our program for this evening. So I just want to share an overview for those of you that are new to Artifact, and it's uh, just a little background on that. Then we're going to focus on the annual competition. We're going to hear um, some Q&A and some uh, discussion with participating, previously participating teachers and students. Um, we'd like to share some resources with you to make sure that you're aware of all of the resources available. And then we'll have also some more time for Q&A. Um, if any questions come up during the program, again, please feel free to post that um, in the chat and we'll, we will be sure, uh, Katie and Michael are taking a look at that. We'll be sure to uh, get to your questions. So on the next slide, 
Um, I just wanted to begin. I know that the ambassadors have seen this slide, but just the overall goals of Artifact and to, um, to just uh, provide a quick background. Um, Artifact is an expanding initiative of the Low Milken Center for Unsung Heroes. And um, we are focusing on uh, three sort of high level goals to strengthen student learning through the visual arts, uh, through um, uh, teaching and learning with Artifact uh, curriculum and materials and, and to strengthen the focus on um, the stories of the unsung heroes as diverse individuals from history with unique character traits and actions and um, some character education and looking at them as role models. Um, we're also working with Artifact this year to support professional development. We've launched the ambassadors program that I was just mentioning. We have our online webinar series and we're creating uh, lesson plans and curriculum as resources. Um, and really part of that is to support and uh, teachers in engaging with the curriculum in their classrooms, but also to help foster um, and deepen instructional practice in meaningful ways for the educators that are participating. And then our other big goal is to inspire others that are in our wider community through um, hearing about these stories of the unsung heroes to really celebrate their accomplishment um, and to uh, provide um, some of the recognition that they didn't have in their lifetime and to look at that kind of unique um, way that these individuals support our founders uh, vision uh, Mr. Low Milken's vision that one individual has the power to make a positive and profound difference in the lives of others. And so that's really um, a guiding vision for Artifact that trickles down from the unsung heroes to our educators, to our students who discover that power, um, the potential for that power in through their own art making. Um, and on the next slide, I want to just, I know everyone knows more or less about the Unsung Heroes, but at um, Low Milken Center, for those of you that are new, we have um, uh, Unsung Heroes that have been discovered or uh, their stories have been discovered by students who have uncovered these stories. So these are individuals who have been largely unrecognized in society, but have made positive contributions um, in service to self and others that have had an impact on the course of history. And um, there's a, a process that uh, teachers and students engage in, a discovery project that uncover the stories of these individuals. And a Low Milken Center um, has been working in this project-based uh, discovery project in the classroom uh, for about 15 years, uncovering the stories of these individuals. And then the next slide, um, I wanted to show you there's about 140 of these individuals that um, have participated, uh, or sorry, that the, whose stories have been uncovered through um, the Discovery pro Project, and they span um, diverse uh, disciplines from uh, science, technology, uh, engineering, arts, mathematics, social justice, civil rights, the environment, and from different time periods. And when we work with the Artifact competition, we're really focused on this group of unsung heroes as sort of the core curriculum. Although the question has come up, can um, uh, educators and students recommend new heroes? And yes, they you can, you're welcome to do that. Um, and if you're interested in doing that, you can uh, just shoot an email to artifact at lowmilken, uh, Dot org and uh, we can discuss that process for um, recommending a new unsung hero. So on the next slide, I wanted to show you um, some of the character uh, traits and heroic actions that kind of cut across all of these stories. And when I was mentioning that these, these individuals serve as role models uh, to our students when they're working with this content, these are some of the traits and heroic actions that we've pulled out that are recurring. So kind of thematic in that character education um, category, but you can see elements such as um, compassion, conscience, courage, generosity, um, 
humility, perseverance, and, and those actions that are aligned with that, uh, challenging assumptions, challenging the status quo, repairing the world. So um, these con this content is built into the lesson plans that um, we are developing throughout this year. And so you will see this um, recurring as well. Also the students, when they're working on their art projects, um, are asked, you know, what they admire about the individual that they've chosen, and many of them are working, many of the students uh, work with these specific traits and heroic actions and call them out in their impact statement um, and kind of unpack that through their impact statement and artwork. And I think um, the next slide. Just to recap, uh, so Artifact invites teachers and educators to explore the stories of these diverse unsung heroes from history through their um, and their invaluable lessons as role models through uh, this initiative, which includes an annual competition, uh, exhibitions, and professional development that I've been mentioning. And I want to say one word about exhibitions. On the next slide, you'll see um, two locations for uh, the um, Low Milken Center for Unsung Heroes Artifact uh, Exhibition. So Peter, if you can get to the next slide, we have the Low Milken Center in Fort Scott, Kansas that um, you may be familiar with. I know our fellows and our ambassadors on the call are familiar uh, with this center. There's an exhibition area there. And then we're also opening uh, an artifact um, art gallery, like an interactive art gallery that includes artworks and also um, uh, cultural and uh, social sort of like a history art gallery interactive experience at the Milken Center for Advancing the American Dream, which is an exciting new center that's opening in Washington, D.C., uh, right there close to the White House, um, anticipating opening at the end of this year. And we'll have about 3,000 square foot space of exhibitions that will feature the award-winning student artworks um, for students from uh, participating in artifacts. So it's an exciting opportunity for students as well to um, participate. And the goals of those exhibit is to amplify the student voices, to celebrate the stories of the unsung heroes and the educators. So in the next slide, um, I wanted to turn now to the competition. And um, I wanted to uh, just kind of say, yay, here we are at the 2024 competition. We're so excited this year that we've had expanded the competition deadline to May 1st. And um, you may have seen this. This is actually a, a poster. So if you haven't used this resource yet, Kitty is posting a link in the chat to this digital uh, image of this that you can download for your uh, classroom. And I just want to go a little bit, tell you about an overview of the competition. So the competition, um, if Peter, if you can get to the next slide, we can break this down a little bit. The competition is open to middle and high school students. Um, over 2000 students have participated in the competition since 2016, and it's a global uh, international competition. Most of our entries come from the United States. Um, students are invited to submit artworks. Uh, there's no size limit in 2D or 3D um, media. And uh, the artworks uh, are, um, focused on creatively interpreting the stories of the unsung heroes. Uh, the artworks are, um, there's a judging panel and the artworks are scored according to a rubric uh, that the judging panel uses. And we're gonna talk about that rubric in a little bit. Um, and the judging panel is comprised of um, experts from art education, museum education, design, um, and uh, fine art, fine artists and the top prizes. So on the right of this image, you can see the, the prize amounts um, and there's a $6,000 grand prize and uh, student exhibition opportunities that I was just mentioning in our uh, two locations and teacher, teacher recognition and gift cards. So um, lots of good reasons to participate. There's also awards and certificates that are given at the discretion of the judges, so additional certificates. Um, so this cycle is open now through May 1st. And um, let's see, I wanted to get to the next slide. Should we just quick uh, overview of how to participate. So um, students would choose a hero from the unsung hero list, uh, that category that I was just showing you of the over uh, 130 uh, unsung heroes. Um, 
teachers and students work together to look at the uh, rules, the lesson plans, the scoring rubric, and the impact statement guidelines. So the impact statement is 500 to 1,000 words. And then um, submit online through the portal uh, by May 1st. And we're hoping to announce the winners this year by May 15th, um, sort of a quick turnaround. And we're hoping to make some in-person uh, notifications as well if we can now that we're sort of post-pandemic. So in our next segment, um, I know some of you may have some questions, um, but I wanted to actually invite some of our guests that have joined the call. I'm very excited that we have some previously participating teachers and students and uh, wanted to invite them to share about uh, their process and uh, to have everyone be able to ask them questions as well. So I am going to uh, turn this next segment um, over right now to Michael Kay. And um, on the next slide, we can begin this conversation um, uh, with uh, some of our uh, teachers and students. So Michael. Great, thanks, Tony. Um, so we have uh, a few students here. Um, and the first that I would like to talk to is the artist of uh, the sculpture that you're seeing on the screen now. It, and that's Eve Wilson from Jacksonville, Florida. She won the middle school best in show prize in 2022. And Eve, if uh, you wanna say hi really fast, that would be great. Hello, I'm Eve. Great, thank you. Um, so the first question that we wanted to ask you since it's so often asked of uh, previous award winners um, is tell us about why you chose your unsung hero. Um, I chose Mohammed, sorry, um, because well, I love math and just it's really hard to like cut down on all the options of the unsung heroes. And so I thought the way to get the best artwork out of myself would to be making a piece based on someone that has similar interests as me. So that's basically what I shot for. Um, and yeah, since he was like called the founder of algebra and I love algebra, that's what I went for, but yeah. Great. And how did you um how did you prepare for creating your artwork, um, including researching Muhammad? Um, my first thought was to do like the basic research of who this person was, the time period, so you just get an idea of the environment around him and what was going on during the time, and then I started finding looking up like symbols and objects that kind of go along with his story and his life. And from there, I would do thumbnails like of like a whole range of types of 2D and 3D art piece ideas. And then I'd go on to cutting that down, finding ones that work more than others and making more like detailed drafts, maybe writing down a little, like the basics of how I would go about creating the, the art piece. And then I would pick one. And during that time, I got the help of my teacher to like get a second view on which piece would be the most meaningful and interesting. And then from there, that's when I uh, just kind of, did a lot of planning and measuring kind of and drawing out all different views and how I would go about using different mediums to create a 3D piece since I feel like that's a little bit more complicated than 2D since I have to work with like how things won't fall apart but yeah. That sounds like a very extensive process. Um, how how long uh, do you think that that took from conceiving the idea or learning about the artifact uh, competition to, to finally submitting? Um, well, it's been a while, but from what <laughs> I remember, it 
um, took a few months and definitely a lot of work even outside of class in order to make sure I was on track and making like uh, progress like perpetually. And so, yeah, it's, I'd say around a few months. <laughs> Great. Uh, was there any um, big surprise throughout that process that you didn't expect? Well, specifically for this one, I've found out how much Florida humidity impacts um, just adhesive. And because in order to keep the pages stuck together and kind of have their form of like the flexibility um I use like a spray and over time it would just start to sag and I was like ah and I'd have to learn how or not learn I'd be learning along the way of how I can work with it to make sure the structure is still sound <laughs> and I'd use like wires and and then I'd maybe even add like I'd use different glues and there's something like that. And so overall, I'd say it would, the most surprising things are like, wow, I didn't know this material wasn't going to work with this other material. Right. It's, yeah, again, it sounds very extensive and very thorough. Um, so with that, are there any general tips or suggestions that you would give to teachers or students who are interested in um, participating in the competition? Um, I would say that even though the creation and making of the physical art piece itself is an extensive like thing to do, um, planning, well and, and effectively and being organized with your thoughts and steps on how to execute the project is like a very like large part of it like um if I didn't plan as much as I did didn't do as much research I wouldn't feel as prepared to tackle the project itself and the creation of it so Great, thank you so much, Eve. Um, I know that you had a wonderful teacher who happens to be here with us today, um, and that's Cheryl Lunger. For those of you who don't know, Cheryl teaches at La Villa School of the Arts down in Jacksonville, and has had many students um, not only participate, but many students win, just like Eve, uh, in the last four or five years now. Um, and Cheryl, I was curious if you had anything you wanted to say about working with Eve or her project in particular or just about the competition? Hello Eve, how are you? <laughs> I haven't seen you since Winterfest. Um, you know Eve is unusual as a student I think for you guys who are out there educating. I think you find occasionally kids that really are deep planners and when you get a kid like that they bring you the seed of an idea that you aren't having to give them the idea. They give you the idea and then you can help them get their idea to completion. And so often, I think with art in particular, kids are looking for the answer to come from the teacher. Um, I've had a lot of students who really thrive in this with this contest because we do start first off just learning about the the uh, heroes. In fact, I just introduced this last week to my eighth graders, and I told them I'm like, for now it's homework. Get to know three of them. Go through everybody. Find somebody you think has something to say to you, but do three because I don't let two kids do the same person. That becomes that that it's that's just not good business. And so. Um, they're working on that at this time. And then as Eve said, the research piece, the getting to know them without having to look up facts, but instead I'm pretty quick to think that Eve knows 
If you want to know something about this guy, ask her a question. She'll be able to tell you. She knows that much about this guy. And that's what I really try to push them toward knowledge first. And then from knowledge, giving them this idea that, you know what, like, like Eve found out a lot of things while she built this, things that did work and things that didn't. And I'm, you know, she can tell you one of my favorite things I say is, well, you know, failure teaches you what doesn't work. It's actually a good lesson. It's a big lesson. Much more than the okay. Well, maybe it kind of works. That doesn't teach as much. Um, I think if you're starting this contest, a couple of things that we do, we have, of course, six through eight. Sixth graders, they're not quite ready for this. We don't feel like. So I we start the seventh graders on it. And Eve, as a seventh grader, did a beautiful piece. It did come in as a finalist. She did Jean Cobb, I think, right, Eve? And uh, it was a plane that she started off with tag board and made this plane if you go back to the picture of that you'll be surprised that was started off as tag board but she planned it all out first and uh that gave her the presence to do this piece that first piece got in as a finalist piece and then as an eighth grader she'd gained the maturity to think a little broader and get a piece like this done I don't know, even with the best intent of a planner, that that as a seventh grader, you can get the same kind of maturity. But I, I put it out there to seventh graders, and you know what? I'm ready for one of them to surprise me. But frankly, it's great practice so that by the time they're eighth grade, they're better thinkers. And this contest brings something that others don't, besides the money. It actually brings empathy to people who have done something. That, that we don't even know about. And I think bringing that to the kids is the biggest value of this contest. And some of them don't embrace it. Some of them, it's a labor to them they don't like. But the idea, they, they do it and they have to do something about it. It touches them somehow. Um, and like I said, Eve is, Eve is that person who really took it to the, to the I think the, the beautiful extreme and created this piece that many, many people would not have done that. Many people would have gotten halfway through this and they would have said, this is too much. <laughs> or they would have left something out and he just isn't that person. So she's a great kid and I'm glad to see her. And I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has, if anybody has any. Great, thank you so much, Cheryl. And Eve, thank you. Um, I'm sure that there will be questions for both of you um, at the uh, in the next little section of this um, session. Um, but now I wanted to uh, start asking questions of Celine Fong, um, who is our grand prize winner from last year um, out of Rye, New York, the Rye Country Day School. Um, Celine, if you'd like to say hello, that'd be great. Hi. Great. So, Celine, I'll uh, ask you similar questions to what I asked Eve. Um, and the first, and this is a question I've asked you a few times, is uh, to tell us about why you chose your unsung hero and who he was. Um. So, Abdel Sadari, essentially, um, he was like the Iranian consulate uh, in France during the Second World War. And he... Um, felt a responsibility to save um, like both the Jewish population in France and other sort of um, like French people uh, during the Second World War. And he did that through issuing passports and sort of like safeguarding their um, their belongings. And after the war, he refused to seek like any recognition for his actions. And I was just really inspired by um, the fact that one person was able to make a huge difference in our world. Um, and in class, I was exposed to different stories about this, for example, like Schindler's List. And I was really interested in seeing like the nuances between that and this story. Great, thank you. And how did how did you prepare for creating your work? Um, so I would say similar to Eve, I did plan a lot for this. Um, it took me about a month to sort of uh, go from like the brainstorming process to finishing my painting. And I spent over, I would say like 40 hours on my oil painting. Um, but essentially I began with sort of like researching um, his story and then doing a lot of like thumbnail sketches. Um, and 
yeah I would say I did about like maybe like four or five of these like preliminary sketches to find one that I really liked and both in terms of like um capturing the story and capturing the aesthetic elements thank you for that um, that was a great great answer um so throughout that process again just like Eve very extensive uh, was there something that surprised you that you uh, may not have expected when you decided to enter this competition? Um, I would say it's difficult capturing someone's like entire life story in one painting. Um, so I sort of like dealt with that through focusing on like specific key elements that I thought really resonated with myself and with the story in general. Um, but also it's it sort of surprised me just like sort of how inspiring the whole process is and how rewarding it is um, through learning and researching about the person and making the artwork. Great. Are, are there uh, suggestions or tips that you might give to students or teachers who are interested in participating? Um, I would say to definitely uh, plan early and start early, um, but also to have fun and like trust in your ability um, and take joy in your artwork and enjoy the process. And personally, I felt like very guided by um, the story and sort of like Sardari's actions. Um, so I would say definitely um, be inspired by that. Um, but also take notes during the art process so you can have like sort of your thoughts gathered when you're writing the impact report. Great, thank you. I'm sure that you'll also get more questions just as I'm sure Eve and Cheryl will. Um, but I wanted to ask you one final one um, and that's uh, how you see art fitting into your future. Um, so I've always enjoyed doing art since I was really young. Um, and it's like, it's a big part of who I am. I, I like paint for like hours every week. Um, and I'm actually an incoming freshman at Columbia where I'm planning to major in art history and art. So I definitely want to continue honing my skills and practicing and, um, getting into more professional art in the future. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, for now, I want to turn, uh, things back to Tony who has some questions for our uh, teachers. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna definitely circle back to, to this set, um, but if you would uh, go to the next slide, please, Peter. I wanted to um, hear from another uh, student who I believe is on the call, um, Chloe Yu, who, uh, is Chloe here? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, nice to uh, hear from you tonight. Thank you for joining us. Well, um, we would love for you to share out about your artwork, um, which is on the screen, a genius inventor behind beauty on unsung hero, Hedy Lamar. Um, and uh, this won uh, last year's middle school second place, your artwork. And uh, would love to hear as well, um, why did you choose uh, this hero? Okay, um, so of course, I started behind with a lot of research, like perusing through the list of unsung heroes. And so I was ultimately drawn to Haiti Lamar because of her accomplishments in STEM, which is a field that I'm interested in. So that's definitely one of one of the reasons and because of like the connection that I felt with her. And that was definitely one of the reasons, of course. And also, I think the big also because of the big impact that she's had on our world. So Haiti Lamar was um, an actress and she was of course, very pretty. And so along with many, several other people, she was able to develop like frequency hopping systems that help like direct, like um, that help direct torpedoes. And that ultimately led to a lot more um, inventions toward what we have today, like Wi-Fi, GPS. And I think that just had a, like a big impact on our world and um, in the field of STEM. Great. Yeah, that's really comes across in your artwork. The the um I mean she's beautiful, but also the all the dynamic aspects of her um her story and the stem uh with all the the layering of the graphics that you put in the background. I wanted to ask you as well, um uh, you know, how did you prepare for creating the artwork? Right. So, of course, like the artist before me said, there was a lot of research that went into it. So, and similarly, um, we, we all made thumbnails. We made thumbnails to like first get like the idea, like what key elements that I wanted to include in this painting to really highlight like the artist's specialty, what they did and what they accomplished. So, um, however, kind of different from the other artists, 
The piece that I made was also digital art. So although I made several thumbnails, I was ultimately able to edit pieces around because of the ability of like digital layering. layering. But um, either way, it definitely took a lot of work. And with combining pencil and digital art, it was really complicated and it was a new experience for me. Yeah, that's wonderful. I mean, you you will put the the two mediums together uh, so nicely that they really um, fit the composition holds together so nicely with the different mediums. Um, I also wanted to ask you, um, was there any surprises working with the medium or in this process uh, that came up for you? Um, definitely, yes. This was actually my first digital art piece. So I got to experience like using Procreate um, like layering different like um, adjustments that you could make throughout the piece. So that was definitely one of the new things that I tried out. And of course, combining two different mediums and something interesting, it was just that the process was definitely very reward rewarding. It was very fun to complete. And in the end, I think that it was a really good and proud accomplishment. Definitely, definitely uh, something to be proud about. And one last question, um, and then I'd love to hear from your teacher who is also on the call, um, but I wanna ask you what suggestions do you have for other students or uh, for our teachers on the call for their students? Um, I think for students who are participating, I think um, when you're researching, I think like helping, to, like finding an artist or you know, finding an unsung hero that you really like connect with that like you feel like compassionate or like interested and in about like their impact on the world today. Um, I think that definitely helps with completing the process as you have like a lot of mo motivation. But again, like there's definitely a lot of research. Don't procrastinate and just um, like be willing to spend a lot of time on it. And yeah. Great, thank you so much. And um, I'd love to hear from your teacher, Constantine, who is on the call with us. And Constantine Kovaros is a social studies teacher. Um, and he's also um, an Artifact Ambassador and was a 2021 Loam Wilkins Center Fellow. So uh, Constantine, we'd love to hear about um, any reflections that you have about working with Artifact in your classroom um, with Chloe's artwork or with other um, insights that you'd like to share. Yeah, so um, I had uh, become exposed to Artifact um, when I was uh, participating in that um, in the fellowship at Lowell Milken, and I had uh, been trying to implement it and get um, students to participate in it the year before, but it kind of, um, I wasn't getting a lot of traction that particular year. We had some things at school, and um, I didn't get to roll it out the way I had intended to. And the, the following year, I put uh, a lot more emphasis on it. And um, when Chloe told me she wanted to participate, I was, you know, really pleased. Um, I really enjoy the artifact because I, I think it gives kids that have that passion for art an opportunity to really showcase um, their talent and to tap into something that they are good at to highlight something in the curriculum. And I, I really appreciate um, the Unsung Hero Awards, because I think it's really important to um, give kids these exemplars of, you know, people that have done these really incredible things. Um, you know, they're excellent models for, for our kids. And sometimes they get neglected in, you know, curriculum that is, uh, especially in social studies, when we have so many things we have to cover, we don't always get a chance to really um, highlight these people. And I, I really appreciate this um, this competition because it gives kids that that opportunity to delve deep and find these these special people that they can um, highlight and and then show to to their peers. Great, thank you, Constantine. I wanted to you know especially um, just ask you a follow up question there because you're a social studies teacher and you're working with this art um, and that kind of arts integration. Um, how, how did you uh, how did you do that? Did you um, develop like a lesson plan that aligned with your uh, social studies, or uh, did you tell us a little bit more about how you integrated it into your main curriculum? Um, so research is a big part uh, of our curriculum in seventh and eighth. Well, this year I'm teaching high school, but last year I was uh, teaching eighth grade. But um, that's been an initiative uh, the last five or six years. Um, we spent four to six weeks. Um, having students uh, do research um, for, for various competitions. Um, so 
Chloe is really a very special student. She she was she was involved in a number of different competitions. She had a lot going on and she was um pretty self-guided. Um so I she actually placed in the uh, New York State Archives as well. She did a documentary with one of her classmates on uh, on Jacob Reese, which was excellent. Um so I didn't have I didn't help her much with the art piece, but you know, we did spend a lot of time on the re on you know the research process, how to research, um, finding reliable sources, uh, citations, um, and and the impact statement, of course. Great, thank you. I think that you know what I um, I have a follow up question in the chat that is um, from let's see Sue, and I think it you know Constantine, it's great that you brought the artifact into your social studies curriculum, not being an art educator. And I think this is kind of relates to Sue's question, um, looking at Chloe's artwork and how sophisticated it is with the multiple medias and how uh, beautifully it all came together. Um, is this a question for, um, I guess, uh, did you have a Chloe, did you have a, like an art teacher as well? Or did you collaborate with an art teacher? Or, um, or how did you how did you um, work with the art the aesthetics and the art art aspect of this? Because it sounds like you got a lot of uh, research component in your social studies class. All the way for me, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Um. So, uh, like uh, Mr. Cavara said, um, he was mostly helping me out with like the research part. And um, me, I worked outside of school with an art studio. So basically it was just like me going there, um, um, like me going there sometimes to help work on my art, uh, get like some tips on like the aesthetic aspect of it. And um, should I answer the other questions in the chat? Uh, let's see, what is down there? Um... Want to hear how Chloe uh, combined the two different media, pencil and digital specifically? Maybe just a little follow up on your process there. All right. Um. So for this digital piece, I use Procreate. So first off, I started off with, of course, researching. And so what I did on pencil was just like regular paper, regular paper sketches. I sketched out um Haiti Lamar, the torpedoes, and um the satellite in the back. Um. And then I used, and then I was able to scan these paper pieces onto Procreate, and I arranged them with different layers. And I also added um, the background, uh, film pieces, and several other aesthetics to help out with this. Um, the mixed media wasn't printed; it was just attached as a digital file. Great. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to um, circle back uh, to some more Q&A and we'll pick up some of these questions in the chat. And uh, I wanted to uh, just be sure that we can hear from some of our other guests because we have um, a few others that I wanted to highlight in our time together. So if we get to the next slide, um, thank you so much, Constantine and Chloe, for sharing this your process. And uh, we'll circle back to you. If anyone has questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll be sure to pick them up. So, so I want Tony, can I just say one thing? I'm sorry, before sure. you, because um, yeah. somebody asked, I, I'm, I'm not an art teacher, we had stated, but um, this year I did actually, um, have an opportunity. I had uh, spoken with the um, curriculum associate, so that's our uh, department head for for arts, and um, she gave me a few minutes at the beginning of their meeting. And I had um, gone and I I, I told the um, art teachers about the uh, competition, and I gave them the resources. Um, so I'm hoping that they're able to push this out to, uh, and they seemed very um, they were uh, enthusiastic about it when they heard about it because they. They saw that this is an opportunity for their kids to, you know, that are really passionate about art, um, a lot of their AP art students to um, to delve into something really meaningful. So while I couldn't provide that, I did, you know, try to build some bridges and try to bring the art, art people on board. Um, and then this way they get, you know, the research part and the art part um, together. And I think that could be really impactful. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I want to really applaud you, Constantine, for uh, bringing this in this project into your classroom. Um, 
um, in your social studies curriculum with the arts integration? Because I know we have many um, teachers that are not specifically art educators. And so you really model like uh, with your student and how you can collaboratively work to get the resources to bring this to make it a meaningful project and to be successful at it. So thank you both. Um, so I want in this next image, uh, this is uh, the 2020 grand prize winner. Um, and we have um, the te our teacher joining us for this artwork, uh, Rena Moore Edwards um, is on the call. And I would um, like to introduce Rena. She is also an artifact ambassador this year um, and her student Charles Rounds the third won grand prize in 2020 for this amazing artwork. So Rena, would you like to share a little bit about your experience uh, working with um, Charles Rounds or just artifact? Sure. Okay, well, um, I've actually had students participating in Artifacts since I think my first year was um, 2018. Um, I usually started out with just having a small group of students in each class. I mean, I am a visual arts teacher, but I have a small amount of students that would um, choose to do this as an extra project. Uh, the year um, 2020 was the year that um, Charles and a couple of other classmates, they were seniors, they decided they wanted to participate. And I will say this is actually, um, this piece was the piece, uh, piece that was the last one that they did before we got out for spring break and then just did not come back because of COVID. Um, and this piece actually really morphed over that time period. Um, he had, uh, the students had all done the normal research and had gone through and looked at all the different um, artifacts, unsung heroes, and had each picked their own. I do make them not only do I make them uh, not pick one that somebody else has, I actually request that they don't pick somebody that somebody in our program has done the year before so that we kind of have a break between people. Um, but uh, Charles has started out with you know, doing the portrait work. Um, our program is real strict about usually like not using references that you can find online. And so this this is very like new to them because they were like, wait a minute, we can actually use the picture of the person. I'm like, well, yes, you just have to figure out how are you going to express this and make this your own. Um, so he started out with originally like the portrait and Charles is a really strong um, graphic kind of um, very detailed with shading and value. Uh, he's actually a junior right now uh, at Mississippi State for architecture, some of the most phenomenal building designs I've seen. He comes back and still shows me stuff that he is doing. Um, but everything on this picture that is in black and white is done in the most tiny little uh, cross hatching. It's absolutely beautiful. But he had gotten into doing a little bit of watercolor, so he had started doing that. Um, during the, when we got out for um, everything with COVID, basically the world kind of went, you know, insane. And he really, like, Charles kept messaging, messaging me about, how I want to add more to it. I want to add more to the piece. You know, um, can I, like, light something on fire? And I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, sure. So we actually, he came up to the school. Um, we did, like, in the parking lot, trying to, like, get this piece put together at the very end so that he could, like, light his watercolor on fire. Um, and that's actually how the, the burning in the back actually kind of came about is he was watching what was going on with everything in the year 2020 and just kind of it morphed from being kind of a collage representing um, this uh, Dr. Eugene into also kind of representing stuff that he was experiencing at this moment. And it was just real fascinating watching how the piece went from that. Um, do you have any other questions about? No, I, it's just amazing. I mean, this piece, that competition, uh, that composition holds together so well. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he actually, you know, burned the watercolor paper and the depth. And I just wanted to highlight for everyone, um, Charles Rounds and uh, as a student, uh, the impact that the um, that we heard from him and that he wanted to come back to his community and that sort of kind of helped launch his um, embracing his career uh, in the arts um, and being able to uh, just really use that skill like you were mentioning. One thing that we really do focus like besides, um, like we, I want them to pick somebody that they feel some kind of connection to. 
but um, we also really focus when they're doing the impact paper, you know, how can they show what they've learned to other people? So one big thing that we started doing, and this has been, um, actually started this year, the 2020 year, but uh, our students, after they uh, create one of these, um, my school is fourth through 12th grade. So we get to take the high schoolers to the fourth and fifth grade classrooms, and they teach a lesson on these artists. Oh, that's amazing. Um, school, um, I've got some crazy pictures of kids with like, like in masks, like back when we were virtual, um, like right when we had gotten back from um, doing the virtual learning and like they're passing the artwork around the room. And, you know, it was just really great because the kids not only learned about this, but they were asking all these other questions. And um, two of the kids are actually going into art education at this point. They're in college for that. And it's really cool that they had like an opportunity to kind of teach ahead of time with this project. Great. Thank you so much for sharing that that additional backstory. So on our next slide, I um, and thank you and congratulations again on these amazing artworks. Um, so I wanted to uh, hear from uh, Sandra Hutton, who had a student in 2022, the Certificate of Excellence for her eighth grader. Um, and Sandra, would you like to uh, share about your experience? Sandra is an Artifact ambassador as well. She's been participating in Artifact since 2018. And any insights or um, tips or suggestions you would like to share with others in our cohort from your participation or about this particular artwork? Sure. Um, thank you for having me on the call. And I have to say the artwork that I've seen so far has been so inspiring. I, lo I love all the student artwork and all the stories. Um, so as Tony mentioned, I've been participating in this uh, project, uh, the Unsung Hero Project and Artifacts since around 2018. And we've had a few finalists from the school. This one um, was uh, given a particular given a certificate of excellence and so we were quite delighted and sort of you know surprised by that because as Tony mentioned sometimes there are those surprise um, certificates uh, that people are given. Um, this student created this digitally and um, this this was a very quiet quiet student with who was a very deep thinker I will say that. Um, in our school we do this project as part of an integrated arts program. Um, I do teach in Ontario in Canada. And so one of the credit courses that is offered at the grade nine level is called Integrated Arts. And we offer it at our school currently as a reach ahead type of program. So one of the things that all of the students within the grade um, were involved in doing is re obviously doing the research and then coming up with their concept for their artwork. But um, I was also working alongside uh, the drama teacher for the integrated piece. And so what they the students would do would come up with um, a dramatic monologue. Uh, we've done it that way in some years. And then uh, other years, it's been sort of a dramatic reading of the impact paper. And then another activity that was done from the drama side of things was to have um, you know, the in a, a kind of like imagined conversations of these unsung heroes. Um, so that was kind of exciting. So it was really, really fun for the students to be involved in that. Um, I will say that uh, one of the things I think I learned um, having done this project through the pandemic um, and the unexpected going online was the fact that uh, we could leverage technology in different ways. Um, I just wanted to mention that. So we really, I'm sure a lot of people did this, but we heavily relied on things like Google Slides and, and Google Sites and things like that. But one of the things that we did do was to create um, a virtual exhibit that was shared out during that time. So that sort of was, um, something that was started during the pandemic and then continued and I'm hoping to do that again this year. Currently I've only done this project at the grade eight level in that reach ahead course but this year the focus is going to be on um, expanding that with grade six and seven because I also teach in those grades as well. Um, I love this composition. Um, I know, as I said, Emily was a, kind of one of those quiet, deep thinkers, but she really came up with uh, wonderful initial concept sketches, kind of in a thumbnail type of version at first. And then she did use um, 
the the uh, program Procreate as well to help with, you know, putting together the the competition and bringing every or, sorry composition and bringing everything together. And that's uh, I think all I have to say about that. But I'm I'm loving all this information that's being shared. So thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra. I, I you know, I'm so light. I love that idea of the dramatic reading of the impact statement and uh, just to be able to share that out in, uh, in that way um, is another layer of um, activity. So thank you for bringing that idea. And I think we have, we might have time for one more. Um, and I want to just highlight on the next slide, um, another artifact ambassador who has been participating in the competition, um, uh, Jana St Stofregen and um, Jenna has participated with full classrooms participating. And so I wanted to um, invite her to share about that experience of having um, um, the whole, sort of a whole class participation and uh, many entries in one year and how you juggle that. So uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. I've had a handful of finalists as well as semi-finalists over the years. And I do this project with my eighth grade art two classes. Um, I teach sixth through eighth in a middle school, but I really feel like eighth grade is ready for this project more than the other grade levels. And um, every, every student participates and they take this on. And I've had some really good results. Even, you know, I know somebody mentioned not every kid buys into it. Not every kid is connected. Uh, to their hero in a deep emotional way, but there are some who who just take it and run with it and they do some pretty impressive things. Um, I've been doing this since 2016. That might have been the inaugural year of the uh, Artifact Project. Yes, and it was. I, and I actually took some students to see um, the grand opening of the Lowell Milken Center because I live in Kansas, so it was about a three and a half hour drive. And to see students um, become giddy over meeting their heroes was something that I'll never forget. And I know they won't forget that either. Um, some of my students were able to meet Lieutenant Colonel Tran Hockwe. Um, I had some students um, sit and talk to the family of June, Jean Shoemaker. Um, so that was pretty amazing. And then I had a student almost faint when she finally got to meet Lowell Milken and he remembered her artwork. So um, it has an emotional impact on them. And it's very exciting to see students get really into the stories of the unsung heroes and they become more important to them than celebrities and, and athletes, you know, uh, and a lot of kids look up to them and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we need heroes too. And they need to have the stories of the heroes in their lives. And so the emotional aspect, I think is one thing that as a teacher, you can really hook the kids with. And that's how I get the entire group to um, want to do the project and want to find a hero that they can connect with. And I think having that emotional aspect, it makes learning stick for them. They'll never forget all of these students that have spoken tonight, Eve and, and Celine and Chloe, they will never forget their unsung hero story. They will carry that with them for the rest of their lives. And I know that my students have that connection to their heroes as well. And they enjoy hearing the stories of heroes. And I usually start out talking about heroes such as Don Ritchie and Alice Seeley Harris, Irina Sendler. I introduce them uh, one impact statement at a time to the students and get them familiar with kind of that emotional aspect of the hero stories, and then they find their own. So I think that connection is really important for students at the beginning of their project. Thank you so much for sharing that. What I, I hear you saying is that emotional connection, which kind of goes back to Cheryl Linger sharing about em empathy and really connecting on an empathetic le level with the hero. And um, I just want to, I think we're almost out of time, but on the next time we just, on the next slide, I wanted to open it up for everyone. Um, if you have any questions that we didn't get to, um, if you need to leave, that's fine, but we, we could answer some questions. If you can stay, I'm happy to answer some questions, but I just want to say thank you to all of our guests tonight, all of the educators um, that have shown up here on the call, all, hearing from all of the teachers and the students, um, because um, just the, uh, the level of commitment and depth that you bring to this project is really coming through. And so I hope that that has been, um, for me, the, mo the biggest takeaway is the, um, the, the, that connection to the stories and 
uh, supporting the students in this learning. So if anyone has any questions, um, we could have some quick questions or hear from anyone. Um, certainly you can visit the, the main page of the website for more information and uh, Katie will post that there about the competition. You can always email us, but uh, please feel free if anyone has any questions or follow up for, um, for us or any guests that are still on the call. Um, Go ahead and unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question. I, I don't have a question, but I would like to mention to you guys who have not tried this, if you're wanting to do it, I find the website and the winners and the finalists and the discovery awards to be the best resource for helping kids find the, the thing they're interested in and to see the the vast array of, of chosen finalists and winners, it really kind of, I think, helps them get their feet on the ground if they haven't done it. And even if they have, like, you know, done it in the past, they it, it just gives them a real good bedrock to kind of launch from. And I encourage them to, in particular, use those Discovery Awards as a real, you know, start there. Those kids did amazing on those things. And so if you haven't watched them, then you should, because they're really worth a watch. Uh, our district right now has blocked them. <laughs> I've got to, we're having to watch them on our phones, <laughs> but um, I, you know, I've told the kids, I'm like, go in there when you're not on a district computer and really watch these things. Some of them are just, I, I can't commend those discovery kids enough. They've done so much with that. So just my comment. Thank you so much for sharing that, Cheryl, because, um, you know, the, the differentiation between the Discovery Award and the Artifact is that Artifact, the students are spending more time creating the artwork, even though they do need to do some research, but the research that has been done with the Discovery Awards is such an amazing um, resource and also being told from that student perspective. So thank you for pointing that out as an additional um, resource. Any other questions or comments? Uh, for anyone um, that would like to stay. Mm -hmm. um, hi, my name is Lenore. I did have a question. Um, so my students are art students and then they write the impact paper, but um, I was struggling with how they would share their project with the community. Um, you know, I wasn't sure if they were supposed to do a mural or some kind of presentation or how they're supposed to go about that aspect. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. So as part of the project, uh, students submit the artwork with the impact statement. Um, we can post those impact statement guidelines in the chat for you that can help you break down the essay because it should cover certain aspects of, um, you know, why they chose the Unsung Hero um, and then how they intend to share their artwork out. They would uh, it, um, discuss that in the impact statement. So what that means is like what do they want to do and uh, some students will you know they'll share it out with uh, their family or their community some of them make a website some of them um, post a story or so it, it's um, it varies on the student and what access and means they have some of them would uh, have a um, school doing an exhibition so they'll say that it's going to be included in the student exhibition that the school is organizing for them so it's just like helping the student think about the next step of how they can and will somehow celebrate that artwork in their classroom in their school or in their community or with their wider um uh wider community depending on uh you know how they want to share it post it or or display it Okay, so that's pretty open then to what the, the student can can do. Okay, yes. thank you. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, thanks so yeah, much. If it's helpful, when you look at the winners, the impact statements are available on the website. And so you can have the students kind of look through those to get inspiration as well. Okay, I will. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, Lenore. And Mimi, do you have your hand up? Nice to see you, Mimi. Yes, I do. And thank you. Um, Good to see all of you as well. I actually had a question. Forgive me. I do not remember the last teacher that shared work that um, taught middle school. Is, is she still here? Uh, is that Jana? Yes. Yeah, I'm still here. Hi, Mimi. Hi. Okay. So I noticed um, that of the student work that you shared with us this evening, there was two that looked, I, from what I could tell, that were collages. 
and then one in the middle that was some sort of sculpture. Am I correct? Right. Yes, correct. So my question to you is, how do you guide your students? Yeah, excellent. How do you guide your students through the process of like selecting a median and and that and then sort of what's obviously appropriate for them and then building this the um their visual narratives from there because these are yeah thank you Mimi that's such a great question and um usually what I tell students is when they're picking a medium um, to do something they feel comfortable with, to do something they're familiar with. But I do not discourage them from trying something new. I will support them if they want to try a medium that they've never tried before. So um, I tell students, it, you know, this is a challenging endeavor enough without trying to teach yourself a new medium. Um, so if you feel comfortable with watercolor, great. If you feel comfortable with graphite and, and on paper, that's okay. If you're comfortable with uh, oil painting, I'm fine with that. I will support you. I'll help you get the materials. But I had a student come up to me one time and she said, I want to try stained glass. And I said, okay, I can support you in this. Have you ever done it before? No. And she wanted to make a, a stained glass stepping stone because the connection between her unsung hero breaking glass ceilings and the medium of glass was what she wanted to do. She wanted to make that, um, that visual connection and that um, um, emotional connection too. So I, I supported her, we got the materials and it turned out really awesome. So I don't discourage, but I do tell them, hey, you know, if you don't wanna teach yourself something brand new and spend the time doing that, this is, this is quite a challenge in and of itself without a new medium. Um, so that's what, that's how I guide them through selecting a medium and students come from all different backgrounds. We have sculpture classes in my school. We have drawing, painting. Um, so they can kind of select whatever they want to based on the, the, the experiences they've had. So hopefully that helps you. And then, um, what was your second part of your question? I forgot. Um, I, I think you may have sort of covered it and how do you guide them through sort of like time, like timeline, like how long did it take them to do these pieces? Yeah, well, I only have students for a semester. So I am just now starting with my second semester students and um, we're we're hitting the ground running. So what they're going to be doing is um, choosing a few unsung heroes that speak to them and then they're going to narrow it down to one for their for their project. So they've already started the process and it takes anywhere from six to eight weeks to complete one of these. And we use quite a bit of class time. So it's a it's a really big time commitment, but it's something that I feel is really important, especially for my spring semester students. And I make that known uh, when students are enrolling. If they choose the spring semester, they're going to be doing the Unsung Heroes project. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, You're excellent. Welcome. Thank you for bringing uh talking about the process and the media because um the art competition will accept uh, 2D and 3D media. There's no size restrictions and I think exploring new media like you were just talking about is actually um you know the working with the art in addition to the stories of the unsung heroes uh obviously an important part of the exploration with artifacts. So um any other questions um we're a little over time. Um, if, if anyone has any questions, I guess I can invite you to please uh, follow up with us directly at artifact at lowmelkin.org and we can find a time to hop on a call um, to follow up with any specific questions. We want to thank everyone for showing up tonight. We're so excited uh, about all the activity that's happening around Artifact this year from hearing from our students and our educators and our Artifact ambassadors and uh, very much looking forward uh, to continuing this conversation through um, through the next several months. So thank you, everyone. It's so nice to see everyone. And um, we can collectively uh, unmute and say a goodbye. That would be uh, that would be nice. Good night. Goodbye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.